Okay, uh, hi everyone. This is Kier Meyerly and Sergey Sherrybin. Say hi, Sher Sergey. Hello, everyone. We've been working on planar tracking in San Francisco for the last week or so after after SIGGRAPH, and I thought you guys might want to see how it works. Okay, so pull up Blender and let's do some tracking, motion tracking. Let's pull up a clip. I've got the famous Fabrique clip here. This is an old abandoned building that uh, Sebastian recorded. And let's start by prefetching some frames, uh, which is, yeah, they're loading up here. And while that's prefetching, let's drop some trackers in here. Okay, so first off, let's get one guy up here, because he's nice and easy to track. Let's put another one here, and maybe another one down here, because this looks fairly distinct. And let's stick one, uh, let's say this guy a little bit further away. Okay, so we got some points to track, and they, you might need a plane. Okay, so let's select these guys. Now what we're going to do is we're going to track these points through the sequence, and even though they're not <coughs> necessarily the, a, a square plane that we're, we're going to want to replace, they are on the world plane that corresponds to the thing that we want to, to, uh, to track. So we got those tracked. I think they they look pretty okay. I don't see any slipping, so let's assume they're good. And now, let's create a plane from it. So, here's the new stuff that we added. Plane track. This did not exist before. And what you do is you create some trackers, click Create Plane Track, and the selected trackers define the plane that this rectangle will follow. Now, after you create the tracker, you just get an arbitrary plane. So let's see what happens if we if we play the sequence. So if you play a sequence, you can see that the plane is being deformed according to the markers, or the or the plane defined by the markers. So that looks great. But let's go back to the start and let's actually put the plane where we want it. So you can just do this by sliding the corners to some location that you like. So let's put them on the corner of this of this window. And you might ask. Well, why are you tracking points that are not the corners of the window? You know, isn't this what's called a corner pin? And the answer is, you actually don't necessarily want to always track the corners of the thing that you want to replace. Um, often, that those corners will have some occlusions or other issues that will make it difficult to get an accurate track of the corners. And also, if you look, you'll see that. So there's the corner that you actually want to track, which corresponds to the the corner point in the world. But there's this other stuff behind. And if you use a regular tracker on the corner, this stuff in the back that's going to perspectively distort will actually cause the track to be less accurate. So what you really want is to track things that are well and truly entirely on the plane, which is this, right? This is entirely on the plane. There's no part of it that's going to deform to cause the tracker to slip a little bit. Uh, and so instead, you get you get a better planar track. Uh, okay, so we I think we got these corners sort of well enough defined. And we can check it to see how this works. It looks like it has tracked OK. It seems to be sticking pretty well to the window. Cool. OK, now if we just wanted to replace this with another image, we would be done. We'd go over to the compositor and, and start doing compositing. But before we do that, let's do something a little bit fancier. Let's, let's throw a mask in here as well. So if you go over to the mask mode in the, in the tracker, you hold Control and you click on the mask a few times or on the, on the canvas a few times, and you can create uh, a mask. And there we go, Alt-C to close it. OK, now we have a mask. Just creating the mask isn't enough, though. We actually have to parent the mask to the plane. So the way you do that is you make sure that the plane is selected, which you can see it is in the background, because it's highlighted in white. Then you select all of the uh, nodes on the mask. And you hit Control P. And actually, I'll scroll down to the bottom here so you can see. So I hit Control P. And if you look here, oh, that did not work. Hmm. Oh, okay, yeah. Control P. You can see that it parents. And now, if I play the sequence, you can see that the mask is deforming <coughs> uh, along with the plane. <coughs> so now we're able to um, to do masked planar replacements. Okay, great. Let's move over to the compositor. <clears throat> so we'll switch over to the compositor layout. And first thing first, we have to turn on nodes. We're not going to actually use the render layers yet. 
uh, or at all. Uh, we'll want the backdrop in. Um, okay, so let's add some nodes. So we're going to look for the movie clip, which is the first one that we need. Oops, not distortion. Movie clip. Okay, get a movie clip. And we can feed this guy in. Uh, put a viewer on this guy so you can actually see what's going on. Oh yeah, sorry, I have to select the clip. Okay, select the clip, there we go. Okay, so this is a clip that we're gonna put the replacement in. And at this point, I'm gonna add the node, which is the real magic behind all this new stuff. So plane, plane track to form. So this is the trick. So we make this new plane track node. Let's take a look at that guy. So it reads an image and then distorts an image according to um, according to some planar motion. So what I did here is I selected the the clip that we have the, the planar track in. We select the camera because that's the one that, that's associated with this clip. And then we select the plane track, which is the, the, the window track. Okay, now, before we can put anything in, we have to actually create an image to uh, to display. So let's, let's add one. So we need an image input. Of course, this could be another clip or something, but for now it's just a static image. And in the image viewer here, I'm going to create a new one. Uh, I'm going to make it a test image. I'll make it a color grid. Okay, and now here I'm going to select the image, this untitled guy, and feed this in to the plane deform node. Okay, so now this, this image is going to get deformed according to the, the plane, um, but we, we still need to combine it with um, with the, the other image, so let's add some other nodes. So we need an alpha over. Okay, so we'll stick this guy here. This will become the image that gets alpha over. So we'll combine these two here. Okay, and then we can display this. Uh, okay, let's connect this to the composite output and view this guy and look at that so we have the plane displaying in the background you can see it's all rendered together and if we step through the video you can see that indeed the rendered image is now getting placed on the plane and if all we wanted to do is to to replace just a rectangle we'd be done but let's keep going and add some masking stuff okay to do a mask we need to add a mask input so let's create one of these guys. So mask. We have to select the mask, and currently there's only one. So we'll just single select him. Uh, okay, and let's turn on anti-aliasing just because. Now what we want is we actually want to combine two masks. You'll note that on the plane track deform node, there's two outputs. There's image and plane. Plane is in fact uh, just the. You know, let's, let's look at it. Uh, so plane is a mask corresponding to the, the, the plane. So you can see it's, it's output here. Um, okay, but what we want to do is we want to combine these two masks together. So we'll do that by adding a little bit of math. Just multiply these masks together. So let's take this mask. Let's take this mask. Actually, let's rearrange this. Okay. Uh, okay, got the two masks there. And now we want to take the result of, oh yeah, it have to be multiplied. So we'll switch this to multiply. Okay, so multiplying the two masks together. And now what we want to do is set the alpha for the transformed plane before it gets alpha converted. So we need a set alpha and we're going to take the image output from here and feed that in there and we'll take this and feed it in there and now we're almost ready to do the alpha over we still need to do one more thing but uh, which is that currently the output is not properly um, 
pre-multiplied. So, but let's take a look at the results of this. Okay, so there you can see that it's working, but the alpha, the pre-multiplication needs to be added. This is this is kind of a bug that will be fixed by the time you guys use it. But um, alpha, okay, convert. Okay, we can add this guy right here, and we're ready to go. Okay, so cool. So let's look at that. So we got our little plane here that's partially masked out. You can make this a broken window or something. Uh, and we did that by taking an image, feeding it into the plane deform node, which will deform the image according to the plane of track. Then we combined the mask that we made also inside the clip editor, along with the plane mask to get this mask that you can see there. Uh, then we just combine the alphas and throw it into an alpha order and we're pretty much done. So that was really all there was to it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, we're still not finished. There's still a few little features to add, like a higher quality homography solver. Currently the one we're using um, doesn't work great if there are more than four tracks, but actually the case of more than four tracks should be the one that works really well. So that will be coming soon. Um, there's also some minor usability tweaks. But other than that, we think this is pretty much usable today, and we would enjoy feedback from anyone who gives it a whirl. So thank you very much. Talk to you guys soon.